It's lovely to have you with us from Woods Education. I know this referred to Woods Education earlier, and you're part of the Art Talk to Learn project. That's right. That's brilliant. So thank so you thank, very much. Well, thank you. Uh, Sorry. So I'm Junaid. I'm the head of product at Woods Education. Uh, we're an international education company. We partner with uh, parents and schools, ministries of education, and donor organisations to raise standards in maths throughout the world. And we do this using a combination of virtual tutoring, uh, teacher-led digital resources, and by working with teachers to apply best practices in the classroom. So I want to focus on the virtual tutor piece because that's where AI plays a role. Uh, so the Mathwist Tutor, as we call it, was created about 12 years ago um, to simulate the behavior of a human tutor. So when a child first signs up to Mathwist, uh, they receive an initial diagnostic assessment. It maps their strengths and weaknesses in different topics across the curriculum. And from this, it calculates their overall level in maths, which we call a maths age. So maths age is much like reading age. It has a very natural interpretation. A child with a maths age of nine uh, can be said to be progressing at, at the level that we'd expect of a typical nine-year-old. Uh, so what I want to show you now is a role report um, from a whole class of students. Um, we, we have permission from the school to share this. So each of these icons corresponds to an individual student. Uh, and, and, and this scale here plots their maths age. And so we can see that there's, there's a four year gap here between the highest achieving students and the lowest achieving students in terms of their maths age. And that trend is consistent in classrooms all across the world. And so the challenge for the teacher is very clear. How do you deliver a learning experience that caters to the individual needs and the individual pace of each child's uh, learning? Um, so that's where the MathWiz uh, tutor comes in. Now it's based on a sequencing algorithm that delivers content and adapts to each child's pace of learning. Uh, but it's very important to say that uh, the tutor wasn't created by developers or AI experts. Uh, in fact, it's built on a set of principles, educational principles, around how students learn and how a tutor should interact with a child. And so we gathered those principles from a, a team of education experts and pedagogues. They broke the curriculum down into different topics. They assigned a, a difficulty level uh, for each lesson. Uh, they, they told us that uh, a child should only move forward in a topic when they've mastered uh, the underlying content and that if they get stuck, they should receive targeted support immediately. They said that students should cover several topics in parallel to foster inter in interdisciplinary uh, understanding uh, and to help develop a, a balanced uh, uh, and, and rounded learning profile. So the Master's Tutor models all of those uh, behaviours and our uh, conception of AI until now has been very much determined by those human judgments. Uh, so, so just to give a, a visual sense of, of, of how those principles come together, and I want to look at two students in this class. Uh, let's look at Neve. This is Neve's learning profile. Um, so the red markers uh, show where Neve was placed after that initial assessment, and these are all the topics uh, that, that Neve is covering in the curriculum. And we can see that she has a, a diverse learning profile, and for whatever reason, place value was her weakest topic by quite some way. She had a maths age of close to five in place value. So now the tutor will, will do its thing, it will engage Neve in interactive and engaging content and, and, uh, and, and work to, to address her individual needs. Now, Neve has been on Maths for a couple of years, and, and you can see that she's moved forward. These blue bars show us how much she's improved in each topic. And you can see that now her learning profile is much more rounded, and that's because the tutor uh, has focused on her weaker areas. Now let's look at another student in the same class, so uh, same teacher, same learning environment, same support and instruction. This is Luke. And the first thing you'll notice is that Luke's learning profile is vastly different to Neve's, even though they're in the same class. So uh, in Luke's case, he, he was just fine with place value, but for whatever reason, maybe he skipped school that day, or maybe it just didn't click. For whatever reason, fractions was Luke's weakest topic. And so again, we see now, uh, after some interaction with the tutor, he also has a more rounded learning profile, and in particular, he's progressed quite a long way in those weaker topics, like fractions. Um, so that's, that's how the tutor works, um, and, and that's how we've used AI over the last 12 years um, in, in communities all across the world. And, and by and large, it's, it's all worked pretty well. We've, uh, delivered personalised maths tutoring to about 150, sorry, 500,000 students across the world, and currently uh, we reach 150,000 in, in communities uh, uh, in, in Kenya and Mexico, um, over in the US, and, and of course uh, here in the UK. 
And what our uh, data has shown repeatedly, wherever we go, is that if students use MathWiz consistently for 60 minutes a week, uh, if they use it for at least 60 minutes a week, then in their first year of, of, of usage of MathWiz, they can expect to move their learning forward by 18 months, or, or if you like, a, a math age improvement of 1.5 years. And we've also seen, and again, this is very consistent, that it, if they hit 45 minutes a week, then they'll experience uh, some level of accelerated learning. Their math age will move up by more than a year in, in that first 12 months. Uh, so that's, that's all very encouraging, and, and of course we've shown that maths age correlates with various international and local measures of, of achievement. Um, and, and it's brilliant when it works, but it, it does depend on having a sustained engagement with the child. So if the child can get onto maths with us for 45 or 60 minutes a week, then, then we're in good shape. But that's not a luxury that, that we always have. Uh, so I've just mentioned that we're currently working in, in Kenya. It's a, it's a large-scale um, international aid project where we're working in, in rural communities to deliver MathWiz uh, to up to 100,000 students, many of them marginalized girls. Now, many of these communities um, within, this, within, within Imanango, or within this project, um, are beset with access issues. They, they just can't rely on a stable internet connection. So now you can imagine that in, in a situation where they're, they're attending school and they're moving their learning forward, um, but they've been offline for a while because the internet's down, and when they return to the virtual tutor, they may find the content too easy. And on the flip side, imagine now, and this is a very real situation, that their schooling is disrupted. Imagine there's teacher strike or conflict. Imagine that they're sick. Well, it's just the summer holidays. So now they, they've gone a, 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 a period of a few weeks or a few months without any sustained learning, which means their knowledge and understanding is going to drop off. And then when they eventually return to, to MathWiz, um, they may find the content too difficult because the virtual tutor hasn't picked up on that learning loss. So when usage is very sporadic, uh, those challenges around learning and engagement are amplified, particularly in these kinds of contexts. Uh, and so it's quite urgent, now more than ever before, for us to be able to adapt to students' pace of learning and their learning needs more quickly and more reliably. And we need to find a way to maximize their learning gains, even in these contexts where usage patterns are intermittent. Now, over um, the past five years, we know that education has been on a, a collision course with, 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 uh, with big data. And, and MathWiz has been sitting on a treasure trove of rich historical data that goes back 12 years because we've captured students' every interaction on our system. And in iTalk to Learn, which Manuela spoke about earlier, we had the opportunity to work with machine learning experts at the University of Hildesheim uh, to see if we could use that data to better target students' learning needs. So they, they developed a, a prediction model uh, using our historical data uh, to try to pinpoint uh, the lesson that was at just the right level of challenge for each child. In other words, trying to adapt more quickly. And there was a, a belief or perhaps a hope that if we rely solely on the data, then, then perhaps there's an opportunity to find hidden structures within the curriculum and carve out the optimal, most efficient learning path for each child. Well, it's a very bold and very hopeful claim. Uh, so we put it to the test. Uh, we, during I talked to them, we, we, we worked with uh, one of our schools and methods. We had 98 students in years four and five, and we split them down the middle. Uh, we randomly assigned half of them to the MathWiz sequencer as, as normal, and the other half to this so-called intelligent sequencer. And we tracked their learning over the four weeks. Uh, we administered some external tests to measure their learning gains, and we administered some surveys to see what the experience was like. And of course, our support team was working closely with them, uh, as, as we always do, just to, to gauge their day-to-day -day experience. Um, and the results were, 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 were fairly mixed. Um, on, on the one hand, you know, it's a four-week so four period, so you're always going to be uh, limited by the scope of what, of what you can really show. But there were some encouraging results for the intelligent sequencer. When we looked at the, the results uh, in, in, in the external test, uh, we found that there was no significant difference. Um, and if you put a, a positive spin on that, that's saying that even though it was moving the, the child through the curriculum um, more quickly, it wasn't uh, jeopardizing their overall learning gains. And when we compared uh, students' attitudes through the surveys, on the whole, it seemed as if they, that they'd taken quite well to the sequencer. Uh, so, so there was certainly no obvious downside to using the intelligent sequencer. And from our observation, we could see, uh, just by looking at um, 
at, 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 at the progress data, we can see that the intelligent sequencer was uh, skipping less, a few lessons at a time. Uh, it would move for students forward uh, a, a few lessons at a time, and it would also um, move them into, into uh, remediation a lot quicker too. And so there was a sense that there was more of that activity going on. But we also heard from some of our students uh, that the intelligent sequencer at times played up a little bit. There were times where the students were slightly bemused by the order in which some lessons appeared. And, and they, were, they were slightly frustrated at times by the fact that some topics kept reappearing. In other words, relying solely on the data uh, risks defying some of those principles of learning and engagement that the math sequencer is grounded in. And so moving forward, uh, we're, we're very keen to, to tap into all this potential of AI, uh, but we, we want to ensure that we wrap that around our, our human judgments. And we're working out to try to bring the best of those two worlds uh, together. Now, there's a lot of talk on AI at the moment, and every time there's a new milestone like beating the world uh, Go champion, um, there are pockets of the education community uh, that, that look somewhat nervously towards services like MathSwiz because there's a sense that these digital learning tools uh, of, of the uh, information age are going to uh, displace human intellect in much the same way that the machines of the industrial revolution displaced human muscle. Um, and with all this talk now of intelligent sequences and big data, there's perhaps a sense that maybe um, curriculum experts and pedagogues and, and dare I say it, teachers are under threat. Um, but at WIS, we, we take a, a different view. Uh, we, we, we know better. From 12 years of experience, we know that virtual tutoring is just one piece of the puzzle. And the deeper question is how you integrate that within a learning environment to support a teacher's instructional goals. And projects like I Taught to Learn uh, inform a more measured view of what AI can and can't do. Uh, now, I'm just about old enough to remember uh, the uproar when IBM's Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov back in 1997. Uh, we were told that the race against the machines was over, at least for chess players. Um, but then something interesting happened, something that I think history has forgotten about. The chess community came together and they organised these freestyle tournaments. Uh, and these tournaments consisted of hybrid teams um, that had human chess players alongside, competing alongside uh, computers. Um, and the best teams weren't the ones with the, the high-powered su supercomputers or the ones with uh, the human chess grandmasters. In fact, the winner of the first such tournament consisted of two amateur chess players and three very basic computers. And according to Kasparov himself, what set these teams apart was that they understood chess as a process and they knew how to achieve the best combined potential of computational power and human insight. And I think there's a very powerful lesson in there for educators of what we can achieve uh, when we race with machines rather than racing uh, against them. Um, I, I'm excited by this idea of unleashing AI onto education, but I have to tell you, I'm more excited by what happens when we flip the script. What happens when we unleash human insight and judgment onto AI and bring AI into servitude of our educational goals? And I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much.